Hey guys, thanks for joining me again today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to sand. It's going to be pretty short, pretty simple. Sanding is not difficult, but there are some nuances to the techniques, some do's and don'ts. And I'm also going to show you the products that I use, specifically the Infinity Model sanding sticks and sponges and how they compare to a more generic brand from your local hobby store, something like Squadron Products sanding sticks. Guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to see more of these videos, if you find these useful and valuable, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when more videos come out in the future. And if you have any questions at all, if this video left anything in doubt for you that you're still wondering, make sure to leave that question below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, thanks for joining me. I've just finished scribing and detailing the main core part, so it's all ready for paint prep. I need to sand this to get rid of the grooves around the chisel marks and the craters around the drill bit marks. So what I have here is a 600 grit. That's what I start off by sanding with. The 600 to remove the nubs, to remove the sharp edges created by the cuts that we make in the plastic. The technique that I'm gonna use here is what's called wet sanding. It's applying water to whatever sanding tool you're using be that sandpaper or sanding sticks like this or sanding sponges. This one is a sanding sponge. It's flexible. It can conform to curved surfaces. So it's perfect for this core piece that I'm going to work on here. One thing to watch out for with these cheap products like things by Squadron is that the sanding paper that's glued to the actual board is that it uses a cheap adhesive so that the sanding paper comes off of the backing easily and quickly and it causes a lot of wear and tear very very rapidly on the product so that you're actually not getting your money's worth but with these infinity model sanding sticks and the sponge they use some kind of technology or technique that adheres the grit to the base material really well so i can apply and apply and apply and dip these sanding sticks and sponges into water and they'll retain their integrity these are an import from korea thank you to uh, it's a gundam's gunpla channel for pointing these out to me one thing i can say about these nice quality sanding sponges and sticks even if you can do a great job with some cheap basic sanding tools um, it's really not fun. Sanding is a tedious task and it really needs to be done to ensure the end quality. Getting your hands on some of these nice sanding products such as Infinity Model makes sanding actually enjoyable. For me that's a big plus because uh, it makes me want to do a good job taking care of my parts after I've scribed them. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take my toothbrush and I have a jar of water set off screen, just lukewarm tap water that I dip my brush into and I'll brush the moisture onto the surface of the sanding sponges and get to work. Like I said before, the sanding sponge has a soft backing so it conforms to surfaces and is perfect for contours and curves. If you use a flat sanding stick, you might reshape the piece, say turn a curved surface into a flat surface and unless you want that, it's something to be avoided. So I'll give the entire piece here just a rub with the 600. I'll focus on the nub marks. Sometimes the sponge doesn't eliminate nub marks all that well. So you'll have to go at it with a sanding stick to make sure you get it down flush with the rest of the surface. But all I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over it with my 600. So the reason that we wet sand is because if you decide to dry sand, a lot of the extra plastic that's getting stripped off by the sanding materials, as well as the sand itself, will get thrown up into the air if it's dry, and you could end up breathing that in. And we want to be doing this for the long haul, right? We want to do this as a sustainable hobby for our health. And so in order to avoid blowing these dusts, into the air, we wet sand all the time. Whenever you can, remember, wet sand. Okay, next what I like to do is I jump up to the 1000 grit in order to smooth the surface out a bit more. Some basics on grit if you're a complete newbie to sanding. Grit is the roughness of the sanding surface. So the lower the number, 600, the rougher the grit and the larger the grains that you're using to sand the surface. So the more uneven the surface is gonna be. So I'm going down to a finer grit, the 1000, and I'm going to use this to make the surface a bit smoother than the 600. This is all to prepare for laying down primer and then laying down paint to make sure that everything sticks nicely to the piece. 
So I'm gonna rub over this piece with a 1000 a little bit more, make it all shiny and nice. And sometimes this is where other modelers stop. They'll go 600 or a lower grit than that and a 1000 and that's how they'll finish their piece before they move on to painting. I like to hit it with at least three different grits and that's just a personal choice. So do whatever your heart desires. So now as you can see here, I've moved over to the sanding stick. That's a rigid material for the flat sides of the piece. Again, the 600 grit, also in Fini model. I've also applied moisture to the surface of the sanding stick. And note the way I'm holding the sanding stick here. That's to ensure that since I'm using a flat, rigid board, I don't want to reshape the piece beyond what I desire. So I'm making very careful with my grip and my motion that the board is parallel with the surface that I'm sanding. Very important to keep in mind. You don't want to reshape your piece. And I'll focus on the nub marks here until they're nice and erased. And I'll touch up any other little spots that still look rough. One thing I'm also doing here is that I am erasing the seam lines that I made. And I'll go over seam lines in a different tutorial. But essentially what seam lining is, is it's removing the gap between two different pieces, right? Because this core is actually two pieces, the top half and the bottom half. What I did was I cemented them together and that cement causes the plastic to melt where it's in contact. You push the two pieces together and it pushes out extra cement and melted plastic so that when you go back and you sand the seam line, the two pieces now look like they're all of one piece. And so what I'm doing now is I'm taking care of that extra material that oozed out the sides during the seam lining process. Something I didn't get to show you guys for this series. And then once again, going to attack it with the 1000 grit flat sanding stick, always making sure that we are wet sanding. And well, you guys, that's pretty much it for my process. All I do is I go over it with a 4000 polishing block to make it nice and shiny and squeaky and ready for paint. Very smooth surface. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you're thinking, what your questions are. I'll respond right away. And of course, if you like this content and you want to see more of it, make sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell so you get notified when more videos are released. I am going to be releasing regularly, at least three times a week. That's the plan. I'll try my best to keep to that. I might even do more. In any case, I'm going to head out, you guys. I had a lot of fun doing this for you, and I hope you get something out of it. See ya.